All right, so for part two of this series, I thought we'd talk about watering cuttings because I get this question all the time. But first, hit the like button, subscribe, and if you have any comments about this subject, just put them down below and you know I'll read them. And if you wanna see everything I do around here and get all the intimate details of my little operation, click on the website below and go check that out there. All right, so with that out of the way, let's get on with the show and into the nitty gritty. So when it comes to propagation, especially these softwood cuttings through the summer, the question always arises, how often do I water my cuttings? Now this is an important point because if you're over watering your cuttings, you're introducing too much moisture, which will contribute to bacterial growth and eventually rot. If you're under watering your cuttings, they can dry up and wilt and die. So we gotta find that happy medium where things are going really smoothly and those cuttings are soaring to success. So to get to that happy medium, there's no quick answer. The real answer is you water your cuttings as often as they need it, but you also really wanna put yourself in a position where you don't have to water your cuttings. What I mean by that is this, if you're using material like peat, peat soaks up a tremendous amount of moisture. And so you really don't want to have to water that because if you water it even a little, it's going to absorb a ton of moisture and it's hard to get rid of. If you're using a material like sand, it drains really well. And so you may, on a hot summer day, have to water more frequently, maybe even every day, just to make sure that that medium is moist. Now, there's also other criteria like Am I covering these cuttings with some kind of a plastic lid or tote? Or am I using a system like intermittent mist? All of these little variables are gonna change things. So if you're covering your cuttings with some kind of a plastic system, then humidity will build up inside of there and you're gonna lose moisture a lot more slowly. So once again, you may not need to water as frequently, even if you have sand. But if you're using a system like intermittent mist, you're gonna to have to have those mist heads going pretty frequently because there's nothing to trap the moisture in. It's just constantly losing moisture and you need to maintain the humidity around those cuttings. So let's take a look at some peat moss that I've had for a while in a five gallon bucket. It's pretty saturated with water and I'll show you just how much water I would say to start with for softwood cuttings. So this bucket's been sitting here for quite some time now and you can see it's kind of a soupy mess, but this is way oversaturated for cuttings. I keep it in this bucket of water so that it can constantly stay hydrated. If you're gonna use this stuff for softwood cuttings, you have got to wring it out. And I mean wring it out really well. So I squeeze this stuff until there's not much coming out at all. And those drops of water are very slow, if anything at all. And now you can see, once you release your grip on this stuff, it is just a nice moist material that is a hair on the dry side. It's not completely saturated with water. It's just a real airy material that's got a little bit of moisture throughout. That would be perfect for softwood cuttings. You want as little moisture as possible in that peat moss because you want plenty of air throughout all those spaces and you do need a little bit of moisture, but not saturated because if you saturate it, that's when the bacteria will take hold and start rotting your cuttings. Remember, cuttings don't really take up a whole lot of moisture from the soil. They get their moisture and they lose a lot of moisture through their leaves. And that's why it's important to either cover them with a tote and keep that area humid around the leaves or use an intermittent mist system where you're constantly misting the cuttings and keeping that humidity up in that way. So people ask me, well, how often do you need to water that? I mean, the peat's going to dry out eventually. Well, first of all, I don't recommend using peat moss with a system like I did for the roses where I had a pot and I put you know the material the sand in the pot and then a, a two liter soda bottle over top of the cutting where there was space around the cutting for evaporation from the material. I don't recommend using peat for that kind of a system. Where I would use peat is maybe in those little uh, propagation domes with the trays where everything is completely sealed so that the moisture stays inside of the system and just keeps recirculating. You don't want the moisture, the little moisture that you have in that peat to be evaporating out because you don't want to have to be watering it. Now, when it comes to materials like sand, the story is a little bit different. You can water almost every day because that sand just drains right through so readily and 
it holds a little bit of moisture, but doesn't hold it so much that it becomes a soupy mess where bacteria can grow. The other thing about sand is it's so inert. I mean, there's no organic material in it that really bacteria could feed on. And so it's really hard to cause rot with a sand material. Now, when I set up my propagation system with sand, like I've showed you guys before, I put the sand in a pot. I've got some weed fabric down below to hold it in. And then I put my cuttings in and I put some kind of a cover over. It could be any kind of a cover. This doesn't even have to be a nursery pot. It could be a big wooden box and you could have a, some kind of a plastic cover over top of that, like some acrylic or something. But either way, this is what I've been doing with the roses. And you can see I've got a lot of space around this thing so that evaporation can happen from the sand. So that will actually contribute to drying out of the sand, which isn't necessarily a good thing, but it's not a bad thing either because we've got this dome. So inside of this dome, we've got plenty of humidity built up. So the sand inside the dome generally stays moist, but if you see that drying out at all, you do have to water. Now, like I said, I would not water like this with peat. I wouldn't even set up something like this with pure peat because it would keep too much of the moisture that I put in. But with sand, this is how I water when it's in this kind of a system. I just water around the outside edges of the container and it moistens all the sand here. The water drains right through because it's sand, and I don't have to worry about it holding too much water. All of that moisture kind of trickles in through from the sides and keeps the inside moist. You probably won't have to do this a lot in a shady location, but if it's a really hot day, sometimes I'm out there every other day just watering like this to keep things moist inside this container here. The main theme I want you to take away from this though is to try and set yourself up in a way that you don't have to water. Or if you do have to water, you have to water very, very little. Because these cuttings are, like I said, they don't have roots. They're not taking up a ton of moisture. So if you overwater a material that's gonna become saturated and just absorb it all, you're gonna set yourself up for rot. So you want a light, airy soil that is hydrated but not oversaturated. And you wanna set up where the cuttings are not losing a ton of moisture. And if they are, and it's an open environment, then you're gonna to need to use intermittent mist. But you don't wanna be thinking, how often do I water my cuttings? You wanna be thinking, how can I set myself up in a way that I don't really have to do too much to my cuttings? I don't have to water them really at all, if ever, and if I do, it's because I've got a material that just drains right through and it's really hot and there's moisture constantly evaporating from it. Let's talk about one thing that is good to do and what your best friend is going to turn out to be in case you do need to keep things a little bit more hydrated or you notice that there's not a lot of humidity around the cuttings and that is this. A spray bottle can be a really good friend of yours because you're just misting the surface of the cuttings, the leaves. You're keeping that humidity around the leaves where it needs to be. That's where the cutting is gonna lose all of its moisture from those leaves. And so you want it to lose as little as possible and just buy it time. That's really all you're doing is just buying these cuttings time until they root. So if you don't have a spray bottle, Get yourself a little spray bottle. They work out really well. But what you don't want to be doing is constantly spraying because what that'll do is slowly over time build up too much, much moisture in your propagation tote or frame or whatever you've got. Another consideration is this, and take this with a grain of salt because it's more anecdotal evidence than anything. It just comes from my experience. I don't have any studies to prove this. Cuttings are like little kids and they need to be coaxed to form roots. Just like a little kid, if you give the kid everything and you talk for the kid and you do all the chores for the kid and you, you, know, you don't get the kid doing anything for themselves, it will not grow into a healthy adult that can take care of itself. The same goes for cuttings. This is kind of my hypothesis and I really feel like I've seen this played out time and time again. If you give a cutting too much water, too much moisture, it doesn't give it any encouragement to grow roots. And so I try to err on the side of less moisture in the medium, less water to coax the cutting to want to grow roots and seek out moisture and nutrition. And I found that time and time again, when I challenge the cuttings with this, they will invariably 
grow roots much quicker. Now I've also done something else. I've gone to the point of trying to take the, the cover off of the cuttings a little more frequently so that there's a little bit less humidity more often around the cutting and that also stresses it just enough to want to grow roots a little bit faster. You don't want to leave the cover off you know so long that it's gonna wilt and die but if you challenge the cutting a little it'll grow roots faster that's my hypothesis and i i just from my experience that's kind of how i feel it works here in the plant propagation world i've seen it happen time and time again another consideration is this and i get asked this question all the time how long can i leave the lid off when i'm watering the cuttings now some people get really worried about this and they think if i take that lid off even once or for a minute, all those cuttings are going to die. And then, you know, a lot of times people ask this question when it comes to airflow as well. Can I take the lid off and get plenty of airflow? Here's the thing about cuttings, and I've done this over and over. It really depends on the cutting and the type of material. Uh, obviously, if you have a real soft wood cutting, it's going to lose moisture quicker and it can wilt over much faster. But if you have a semi hardwood cutting later on in the summer, it's going to stand up to you know, less humidity for a longer period of time. Hardwood cuttings, of course, that don't even have any leaves are gonna stand up for, I don't even cover them. They don't have any humidity around them. But here's the bottom line. You can take that lid off, even with like softwood hydrangea cuttings, you could take that lid off for sometimes 15, 20 minutes at a time if you want to. I've done this in the past and here's the only thing I would warn you against. And that is this, don't forget about it. If I kind of have a rule for myself, if I'm going to take a lid off and do anything in the propagation frame, or even if I just kind of want to air things out a little bit because I feel like it needs to lose a little bit of moisture, I will not leave that spot until I recover those cuttings. The reason is <laughs> you will undoubtedly forget to cover the things back up. If you take that lid off and go about watering something else or taking care of some other plants, it is so easy to completely forget or get sidetracked, go somewhere else and do something else, and then forget to come back and cover them. And then you come back the next day and everything's wilted over and dead and it's heartbreaking. So you can leave the cover off for a longer period of time than most people think. Just don't forget to cover them back up again. Now, when it came to those hydrangea cuttings, I did in that first hydrangea video many years ago now. It's been like six years ago, I think. When I did that first video, people ask me all the time, how long, and by the way, I'll put links to these videos I'm talking about down below. I've also got another one in the past about watering cuttings and how often I should water them where I go into even more detail. But in that particular video about the hydrangea, I actually didn't open that lid once in six weeks. That's the power of these little plastic totes is they seal up, even if it's not a perfect, you know, airtight seal they seal up pretty well and in that particular project i did not open the lid six weeks went by and they rooted and then i opened the lid and they were fully rooted already so i get that question a lot and i thought i'd just answer it right here so that's it guys that's how i feel about watering cuttings i know that's a lot of information it was kind of a longer one than i meant for it to be but it's a question that i get a lot and there's a lot of details involved it really you know how much you water your cuttings is going to be based on the material that you're using to root them in going to depend on the the condition of the wood of the cuttings and the type of plant that you're rooting and how warm it is outside and whether you've got them in deep shade or light shade. And there's just so many variables, but the things you need to remember are keep that material as airy as possible, but fully hydrated. And then if you do have to water, make sure you're starting out with something like this and you're misting, just misting the tops lightly. But if you have to water more because it's in a system like this, and there's a lot of space around that plastic container to lose moisture, make sure the material's inert and drains really well so that you can water around that container and it just drains right through and doesn't hold a ton of moisture and turn into a soupy mess. Really, those are kind of the, the principles and the ideas you need to be concerned with. The rest of it will have to be adjusted as you go, depending on your climate, the cuttings, you know, all those other variables. But the more you practice and the more you play around with this, the better you'll get. The one thing I do recommend, start with a plant that you really like and just focus on that one plant, especially those of you who are saying, I, I get people coming to me saying, Mike, 
I can't get anything to root. I've tried year after year. Pick one plant. Pick that plant that you really love. Focus on it. Hyper focus on it. Get multiple experiments going in this season so you don't have to wait a whole nother year. Really work at that one plant until you get the parameters down. Don't change a lot of variables. Put them in the same spot every time. Or mix it up and put them in different spots. See which one works the best, but then get them in that one spot that works the best. And then keep beating down those variables until you find what works the best for that one plant for you and get good at it. And then you'll start understanding what it takes to root these cuttings and you'll be able to branch out much easier. So it was a lot, I know, but I hope you guys enjoyed this one. And I hope, I really sincerely hope that you learned a lot from it. If you did, you know what to do. Hit the like button, subscribe if you want to follow along and see more of these videos. Have a fantastic week and I'll see you in the next video. Adios. Well, it's only the second episode and I almost forgot here. I got to show you guys an update of something. Well, I've been getting a lot of questions about the rows, the, the original rows that I took, that cutting where we've got like 8 million views or something on the video now. I'll put a link to that down below. And people are asking, how is that rose doing now? Well, it's been like three years, I think, and it's doing fantastic. I'm going to protect this thing and grow it into the most beautiful rose and we're gonna get this plant out on the landscape eventually. I'm just strengthening this in the hoop house where it's a little more protected. Let's go look at it. So unfortunately, I didn't catch it when it was blooming for you guys, but it just finished its bloom, and here you go. That thing is faded off here. Now, I'll talk about something else here in a second. It was actually very fragrant. It's like the most fragrant rose I've ever smelled. A lot of people ask, what's the variety? It's called Blue Girl. But let's pull this out real quick and take a look at it. So there's the original rose. That's the one in that 8 million view video. And you can see it is just doing fantastic. I've been pruning it back over the years. And you can see all the new growth coming up from it. But that stem is starting to get really woody and strong and hard. And when this thing gets another year or so, I'm going to find a good spot to plant it out on the property. And make sure this thing just goes on and on for a long, long time. I want to see this thing bloom beautifully for years to come, but it turned out to be a really awesome rose. If you guys find Blue Girl, this is an amazingly fragrant rose. It's very beautiful. I love the lavender color, and I'm telling you, it just smells absolutely outstanding. Now, in case you're wondering, I might as well show you an update of Richard's roses. So, you guys remember, I did a video about some cuttings that a guy sent me named Richard. And he said that he had the Queen Elizabeth, and he sent me these cuttings. Now, all of them, I think it was, or most of them, rooted. There's one pot there, two, three, four, five five and six way in the back there and they're all doing real good and healthy i've been pruning them back too you can see they're getting stronger and stronger stalks and we got this beautiful bloom on this one very fragrant really nice rose once it gets planted out in the landscape they'll get even more beautiful but there's richard's roses all right, so that's it, guys. I think I've thoroughly exhausted you. I know I've exhausted myself, and we've seen updates of the roses. A lot of you ask about those. I hope you enjoyed them. We still got them going here. We're going to get them planned out on the property. Have a fantastic week, guys, and that's it. Adios.